The time has come for us to separate ourselves from the kings of Sodom. The time has come for us to look some opportunities in the face and know by the Spirit of God that this is impurity coming to taint our package. And what can we and say no? It may look good, it may look like wealth, but this is not righteous abundance. And I have raised my hand to say that the only source I will rely on, the only source of wealth I need, the only source of abundance I need is a source that directly comes from the blessing. And I have that connection to the possessor of heaven and earth. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkichi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Fresh Dew is a program designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and to give you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Today on Fresh Dew, we take part 14 of our ongoing message series, Abundant Resources on Every Side. Our definitions have been abundant, existing, or available in large quantities, plentiful, having plenty of something. Abundance, the state or condition of having a copious quantity of something, plentifulness, resource or resources, a stock or supply of money, material, staff, and other assets that can be drawn on by a person or organization in order to function effectively. In direct contrast to abundance, we've been defining lack, lack deficiency or absence of something needed, desirable, customary, lack of money, lack of skill, something missing or needed, wants, a thing absent or in short supply, to be without, to be short of, or deficient in, and so on. We reviewed three realms of abundance. We said after the realm of lack of deficiency, then you step into the realms of abundance. And the first realm we looked at was the realm of miracles, then the realm of purpose, and then the realm of luxury. Then we got into some foundational truths, and we began to compare abundance versus lack, abundance versus lack. And the first statement we made which we can all make together, is abundance is a blessing from God and lack is a curse and not a state of the economy. Abundance is a blessing from God and lack is a curse and not a state of the economy. So even in a country where the economy is really bad, the blessing can cause you to experience abundance because abundance is independent of the state of the economy in the country you're in. Now, if you refuse to believe that, then it's okay. You can flow along with the economy of your country. But I choose to flow with the economy of the blessing. We found out from Deuteronomy 28 that there are curses of lack seen there. But in the same chapter, we see blessings of abundance. We also saw that the default state of the believer is to be blessed. Then we switch to Abraham. And we saw that he was blessed. He wasn't just blessed, he was rich and blessed. We saw how to walk in the balance of being rich and blessed. We saw the blessing is meant to you know, make you rich with no sorrow whatsoever added. So you've got to keep that pure without letting sorrow come into that package. And we began to look at Abraham. And we saw that in the encounter he had with Melchizedek, who was priest of God Most High, a type of Jesus Christ, high priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek, we saw that in that encounter with Melchizedek, we can learn a lot that Abraham did. And the first thing we said Abraham did when he met Melchizedek was he received. Our emphasis word there was received. He received a blessing connection with God Most High. So when you come in contact with Jesus Christ, you receive a connection with God Most High. Bearing in mind that God Most High is possessor of heaven and earth. So you've got a connection, child of God, with the possessor of heaven and earth. The second thing Abraham did when he came in contact with Melchizedek, who is our type of Christ, was he responded. So we see again our word there, big R, responded. First one, received. The next one, he responded. 
Abraham responded to the blessing connection by giving his tithes and all he had to Melchizedek, the priest of God Most High. Glory be to God. We're going to see how you can respond to the blessing connection. It's one thing to have a connection with possessor of heaven and earth, but how do you respond to it? Again, Genesis 14, 20. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand, and he gave him a tithe of all. Hebrews 7, 4 to 10. Now consider how great, look that, how great this man was, referring to Melchizedek, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils, that's the tithe. And indeed, those who are the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he, whose genealogy is not derived from them, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here, mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives. Even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Such a powerful portion of scripture. Well, let's begin to look at them. First of all, why did Abraham respond in this way? Why did he pay tithes of the tenth of all his spoils to Melchizedek? Well, look at what verse 4 says. It says, consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. If someone says, I wish I had somebody, something here. If someone says, this man is great, and even the patriarch Abraham did something. What are they saying? They're simply saying, this man is great. And even Abraham did, gave him something. By saying even, that person is saying, Abraham is great. Remember, we've studied this, that the, God told Abraham, I will make your name great. And we began to look at what it meant for somebody's name to be great. So Abraham was great. But even great Abraham recognized that this man was great. Recognized the greatness of Melchizedek of Elion. Recognized the greatness of Melchizedek of God Most High. So consider, therefore, how, wow, this is telling us this man, Abraham, was very great. Like we've seen, God blessed him. He was great. But think how great this man must be. For this one, as great as he is, to do what he did to this great man. That was why he paid tithes. He recognized the greatness of Melchizedek, even though he was great. And verse 7 tells us, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better or the greater. So even though he was great, he knew that before Melchizedek, who was a type of Christ, who was priest of God Most High, he was the lesser. And this was the better. So he blessed him. The lesser is blessed by the greater. Glory be to God. So he began to see that is why he paid his tithes to Melchizedek. So there are two responses people give when they discover how great and how wealthy a person is. And when you begin to get a revelation of how great God is, you will have either of you know, these two responses. Look at what some people do. When they know a man is great, they become like a parasite to that person. They start begging that person. Sometimes they drop very embarrassing hints. They come around you. Oh, sir, you know, you're such a great man. Each time I watch you, the way you come into church, the way you comport yourself, you know, I look at you and I say, oh, when I, when I settle and I grow up, I want to be like you. And once I overcome this, my rent challenge, and once I overcome the problem I have paying my children's school fees, I look forward to when I'll be great like you, sir. A man who is obvious, God hasn't just blessed him, but God has blessed him to bless other people. You know, once I overcome these issues I have, you know, the other day I got a letter from my children's school. I've not paid that. What, what is he doing? He's not really appreciating his greatness. He's telling him 
with a sense of entitlement or a privilege, a sense of privilege, you've got to bless me because you're great. I've come to take from you, either as a parasite or you come begging God. And some people come to God that way. And God, you are are so great now. I've been serving you for all these years. Why am I still like this? People are going to ask about the God I'm serving. Where I come from, they know I'm a Christian. God, you need to do something and protect your name. God is not threatened by all those things. That's one response people have when they see greatness. They come like parasites to beg and drop in and draw from them. But the wiser ones have this kind of response when they see greatness. When you see greatness, you see a great man, you find something you can do for that great man. Not because that great man cannot afford it, but because he can. I'll say it again. Not because that great man cannot afford that thing you can do for him. Oh, he certainly can. But because you honor the fact that he is great, you want to be a part of his greatness. So you find something to do for him. So again, back to the example I gave, this brother in church. You come up to him and you say, oh, sir, I've just been wondering what I can do to be a blessing to you. You know, I really, really honor you and the way you comport yourself. Could I be washing your car? Oh, no, it's okay, my brother. Thank you very much. I've got somebody I pay to wash my car. You go and do some investigation. The guy doesn't come on Saturday, Saturdays to wash your gas car. You come back. Sir, I know the man that washes your car only comes from Mondays to Fridays. Then the man says, well, that, that's okay. My car is clean all the time. No, sir, I'd like to come in on Saturdays. You don't even have to see me. I'll just come into the compound quietly and wash your car. Wash it very well. And when you go in that day, you wash his car, you wash his wife's car, you wash the car that carries the children to school, you wash the car that takes the dogs to the pets, you wash every car you see there, and you quietly go out. What are you doing? You've seen greatness, and you're connecting with greatness. There are two responses you can give. The man who gives this second response is a man that understands that when you recognize greatness and you honor greatness, you attract greatness. I'll say it again. When you recognize greatness and you honor greatness, you attract greatness. The brother washing the car for this man, he knows he can afford it. Like I said, it is because he can afford it that he's doing it. But he wants to honor greatness and therefore he will attract it. That was what Melchizedek did. He didn't give the tithe to, well, Abraham did rather. He didn't give the tithe to Melchizedek because Melchizedek was hungry. He recognized he was, consider how great he was. That even Abraham, who was great, and we've seen that being great showed that he was also very rich. He was very rich. He knew he was the lesser, which means Melchizedek didn't look hungry, but he gave to him because he recognized he was great and he wanted to give to him. That, my friends, is why you tithe. So when you hear all these stories of, oh, why should I tithe? Oh, the man, listen to this. I want to, I want to read this. When a rich man or any man does not respond to the blessing connection by giving his tithes, first of all, and don't say, well, I'm not rich. You are rich because God said you are rich, even though you may not have manifested. So you, you watching, yes. When you don't respond to the blessing connection by giving your tithe, first of all, you are actually walking away from the blessing connection. Your pursuit and your journey is in the opposite direction from the blessing. And you are hereby or thereby destroying the purity of the blessing. You respond to the blessing connection. You give to God because you know he is greater. The minute you begin to think you are the greater one, the minute you begin to think you are self-sufficient, then you're like the man who doesn't consider how great this man is no matter how great he thinks that he is. Some ask the question, why then should I tithe when he was under the law? I won't even begin to belabor this. I've got a series, I don't know how many parts, many parts of the blessing and the tithe. I'm sure it'll be on the screen. You can find out how to get it. Where I thoroughly taught on the tithe. But just looking at Hebrews 7, you know, the message is clear in Hebrews 7. It tells us, there was Levi here. This is my pen. It seems to be proving useful for this exercise. There was Levi. Levi receives tithe under the law. 
he was the tribe of, of, of Israel that was set aside to receive the tithe from his brethren. Now, Levi was one of the 12 sons of Jacob, who was the son of Isaac, who was the son of, of Abraham, Abraham. So Levi, under the law, was receiving tithe. But the writer of Hebrews tells us, when Abraham gave his tithe, paid tithes to Melchizedek, Levi was in the loins of Abraham. Look at what he says here. Indeed, those who are the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them, Melchizedek didn't come from Levi, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. So this superseded the law and this preceded the law. Now he says, even Levi who receives tithes, paid tithes. This Levi, though he's receiving tithes under the law, much earlier, Levi in the loins of his father, grandfather, great-grandfather Abraham, actually paid tithes. That's what he's telling us. Paid tithes to Melchizedek. So the issue of the tithes disappearing when the law disappeared it makes no sense because the tithe existed before the law. Indeed, the one who received tithe under the law had actually paid tithe earlier to the type of Christ. That's why I said here, mortal men receive tithe, but there, he receives it. So when you pay your tithe and it seems like a man receives your tithe, he says, no, the tithe is spiritual. That's what it actually is. The tithe is not counting your money and dropping it. The tithe is honoring greatness. The tithe is honoring the possessor of heaven and earth. The tithe is responding to the blessing connection you have with the possessor of heaven and earth. And that is the revelation that Abraham had. And he knew what to do. Even the great Abraham knew that this was a great man. And he made that connection. Glory be to God. So don't deceive yourself with the issue of tithing began with the law. So therefore I will not tithe. No, 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 no. no. Even before the law, the one who received tithes in the law actually paid tithe in Abraham. And paid it to who? The type of Christ who was high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Glory be to God. So when you tithe to the Son of God who lives forever, you are maintaining the blessing connection Jesus gives to you. Tithes have always been something deeper and something spiritual. And the law, if you say tithing is no longer valid, then you're saying that Jesus is no longer valid in your life as the high priest forever. Glory be to God. Third thing he did, I have a few more minutes to finish that. So firstly, he received a blessing connection. Next, he responded to the blessing connection. And third, he relied on the blessing connection only and publicly acknowledged it as the source of his wealth and abundance. I'll say it again. I didn't read that right. He relied on the blessing connection only and publicly acknowledged the source of his wealth and abundance as God. No other source. So Abraham received the connection. He responded to it. He told everybody, look, my wealth and my abundance comes from God, the source of the blessing. Nowhere else. When he told them, listen, I have raised my hand. After they told him, give me the purses and take the goods. And there's nothing really wrong in taking the spoils of war. They all said, mm -mm. these abundance are walking in. I have raised my hand to the Lord God Most High, the possessor of heaven. The one I've made a connection with, I don't need anyone else. That I would take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap that I will not take anything that is yours. He did not want to pollute the blessing. He did not want to open the door to sorrows. He did not want to bring impurity. That I won't touch anything, king of Sodom, okay, that you have to give me. I will not touch anything. Lest you should say tomorrow, 
I am the one that made Abraham rich. He says, well, if these young men with me, they don't have that revelation, they can take what they want. Let them take their portion. That's where they're at now. But for me, I've got a revelation. I've got the blessing connection. I've responded to it. I will not touch. And I will rely only on the blessing. Child of God, you need to get to that point if you're not there. When you say, if it did not come from God, I don't want it. And that's why we began to teach on the balance. The balance of understanding that the focus is not running after wealth for wealth's sake. The focus, the focus is in your pursuit of righteousness. In your pursuit of the things that matter to God. In your heart posture where abundance is concerned. That is the balance. Abraham guarded the blessing connection jealously. He knew it was his source. He understood it was a personal revelation. He didn't condemn others about it, but he understood that the blessing connection was to be guarded jealously. Child of God, the time has come for us to walk in the purity of the blessing. The time has come for us to separate ourselves from the kings of Sodom. The time has come for us to look some opportunities in the face and know by the Spirit of God that this is impurity coming to taint our package. And walk away and say, no, it may look good, it may look like wealth, but this is not righteous abundance. And I have raised my hand to say that the only source I will rely on, the only source of wealth I need, the only source of abundance I need is a source that directly comes from the blessing. And I have that connection to the possessor of heaven and earth. So what can the king of Sodom offer me that the possessor of heaven and earth does not have already for me? I'll say it again. And some of us need to ask that question. Businessmen need to ask that question. Preachers, you need to ask that question. What can the king of Sodom, what can the king of Sodom offer me that the possessor of heaven and earth has not already given to me? Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can see revelation is coming to the hearts of your people. It's just becoming clearer and clearer. Eyes are popping open. Eyes of understanding are just popping open. And we're seeing things the way you see them. Thank you for insight. Thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you for the entrance of your word. is bringing light to your people. We give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Are you alive, but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations 
on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Hello, I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's exciting for me to invite you to Makara Moments. Makara Moments is a teaching seminar that will hold from the 4th of April to the 7th of April this year. The 4th of April is a Thursday, the 5th a Friday, the 6th a Saturday, and the 7th Sunday. Thursday and Friday at 6 p.m. and 6th and 7th, Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. Now, what is Makaira Moments? It's a teaching seminar, and the theme for this particular seminar is the dynamics of the marriage covenant. The dynamics of the marriage covenant. And guess what? I will be speaking for those four days. The dynamics of the marriage covenant. The seminar will hold at the Carpenters Church, on site at the Carpenters Church Greenville in Port Harcourt, and online at tcchurch.online. Whether you're married, whether you're single, whatever category of a single you are, whatever kind of marriage you think you have, I can tell you this, the Makara Moments is for you. If you love the Word of God, you need to be at the dynamics of the marriage covenant teaching. I look forward to seeing you there. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life.